All right, everyone. Now I'm going to go over the process that you need to perform in order to install, in order to utilize your Xbox remote with Sky Warrior. The first thing you need to do is download Sky Warriors and Mantis Pro Gamepad Pro. Mantis Gamepad Pro. Me personally, I enjoy using Mantis Gamepad Pro. But you could use just about any any gamepad software out there. There's a, a couple of others that I have used which have worked really well. And I have gotten Sky Warrior to work with a flight simulation system, which is pretty nice. It's supposed to be the same one that the air traffic controller use. So Getting the all the buttons to map with Skyward was pretty nice, but it was a bit complicated because the entire interface felt like an actual plane. And doing quick movements and flights, uh, it wasn't very feasible. So now let's go ahead and get started, shall we? Once you download Mantis Pro, the first thing that you're going to do is uh, enable the developer options on your phone. In order to do that, you have to go over to your phone settings and on the very bottom mine is already enabled but on the very bottom go to about phone go over to your software information look for build number and tap it about five times once you tap it five times, it will ask you if you want to turn on developer mode and select yes. And then go back to your settings and scroll down to the very bottom. Developer options will become available. Once developer option becomes available, you will scroll down until you see wireless debugging. Go ahead and turn on wireless debugging. It will ask you um, to allow wireless debugging on this network if you're connected via Wi-Fi. Check the circle that says always allow on this network and select allow. Now you should see the wireless debugging toggler turned on. Select wireless debugging. Once you select wireless debugging, it just says Pair device, uh, pair device with pairing code, and it just says um, pair devices, and it should show several devices that you have on your system that is currently paired in. Now, now that you finished turning on wireless debugging, go ahead and uh, go back into the Mantis Pro gamepad. It takes a little while to open up. Select the first option where it says auto, where it says uh, connect. It says auto now, but it should say connect. Once you select this first option, select the first um, settings in order to launch Mantis Buddy directly on the device. Your screen should look like this on this section. You see this notification that says wireless debugging? Um, is turned on, you should receive that notification if you turn wireless debugging on correctly. You're going to select connect. Mine is already connected, but if you haven't done the connection process, then there's a series of steps that you would have to go through where you would uh, grab the connection information and add it into Mantis Pro. This process takes approximately 60 seconds. If it fails, that is perfectly fine. The software itself have already grabbed the debugging codes and it, it already put it into the system for you to use. Once that happens, you can just go ahead and close Mantis Pro and then restart your phone. After you restart your phone, you open it back up. It will automatically connect just like mine did just now. So failure is an option. <laughs> Once you're successfully connected, Mantis Buddy is connected should show up on the very top. And on the very top of your Android setting, 
you should still see the wireless debugging connected popping up. Now it says no gamepad connected. Now you will grab your Xbox controller. While your Xbox controller is turned off, you will press the pairing button that is on the front of the Xbox, right next to the USB port, and the X button on the Xbox at the same time and hold it until your Xbox enters your Xbox controller enters pairing mode. Once that happened, you will go into your setting and then you will your Bluetooth setting and you will connect your Xbox controller. Mine says gamepad connected already because I've already go ahead went ahead and connected mine and I've already click on the plus button and added the game that I will be playing which is Mantis Pro. The next step you will do is you will go to the bottom of the app on the center where the remote control is. You will select the remote control icon. You will scroll down to where it says calibrate control. You will select that option. It should show the type of control that's connected. Mine is the Xbox wireless controller, but it's an Xbox Elite controller, which pops up the exact same way. You will select start calibration. And now it shows a series of buttons that you need to press approximately four to five times. Let me go ahead and press Y, one, two, three, four. Successful, next button, bright B, one, two, three, four. <coughs> next button is A, one, two, three, four. <coughs> next button is X, one, two, three, four. And then it says repeatedly tap your left bumper, left bumper, one, two, three, four. Right bumper, one, two, three, four. Left trigger, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. <laughs> that one took a little bit longer. Right trigger, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I guess that one took eight. And now your menu button, one, two, three, four. And now your select button, one, two, three, four. And most importantly, your Xbox button, one, two, three, four. Now it's gonna go over to your analog. It says tap the left thumbstick a few times. Make sure you do not tap the right one, you tap the left one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And you stop, you gotta keep an eye on it. See, now we change to the right thumbstick. Now you press in the right thumbstick. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Now it says move the left thumbstick in circles, just like in the picture. This will register your the outline for the left thumbstick. Do the same thing for the right thumbstick. Now your analog control are program. Now it moves over to a free test mode. On the free test mode. You move the controller around to test, test the button functionality. The app should follow along. Up, down, left, right. Multiple combination on my control pad. Check these buttons. All right, I check my trigger and bumpers. All right, looks like everything is functioning perfectly fine. Click the left one in, click the right one in. All right, and now select done. Now your control is calibrated. Right here is where you could increase and decrease your dead zone for the control. Me, I like to leave mine at 20. Typically when I play first person shooters, I use 10 or 15. But when I let go of that control, it slowly adjusts me left or right. 20 is just about that perfect number where, where the dead zone stops the control from moving around on its own. All right, now head back to the home screen. Your controller should be calibrated. Your Mantis Buddy should be connected to your phone. And your GamePad Xbox remote should be connected. Next, you will select the game, Sky Warrior. It opens up the game and it puts your float right over the buttons. All right.
the game opens up. I'm just gonna claim a few of my goodies right quick. All right. While you're in the game, you will select battle. On the battle, select game mode. Use the practice game mode. The practice game modes are specifically used to program your, your controller. I like to use the attack payload because that option allows me to fly around and program my control without having to worry about the, the enemy coming after me since I'm the attacker. Go ahead and select conf confirm. Now the mantis icon should pop on the upper left side. I like to keep mine up on the upper left side. That way it's away from everything else. But we're going to go ahead and click start. You're entering practice mode. Go ahead and accept. Calibrating your control is extremely important because this step will not work properly unless your control is properly calibrated. Go ahead and select the mantis icon. That will open up your controls. Select the plus sign for your control. While the plus sign is opened up, you will scroll through the options. Select the option that says left stick. The left stick window should pop up. Now go ahead and move the left stick toward this side of the screen. Hold on, looks like I just died. Center it exactly right over the circle. You see the circle that says left stick? On the right hand side, the arrow that's pointing inward and outward. Adjust it to make it smaller. You need to make sure that this portion sit exactly right on the thumbstick. Continue to make it small so that it fits perfectly on the thumbstick. This helps you identify the different zones for your control. Now to adjust the sensitivity, go ahead and click on the gear icon that's on the left side of it. This opens up the axis sensitivity for X and Y axis. When you touch and hold it, you will see some numbers on the screen. Me, I like to increase it for a one to one ratio. That way my sensitivity is low that I can make slight adjustments as needed. But, if you want it to be very powerful, you could also change it and, and it also gives you the option to invert. Select the white checkbox on the upper right hand corner of the screen, of, of the settings menu. Now go ahead and select the right stick. After the right stick is selected, go ahead and move the right stick so that it is directly centered with your control right over here. Go ahead and minimize the the right stick controls so that it is just about centered with the very top and very bottom of, of your joystick on the right. I can go ahead and make mine a little bit smaller. The reason being is because you want the other buttons on the side to be accessible but your maximum threshold and minimum threshold as you can see is still perfectly within within range you want that to be centered because that's where you want it to return whenever you go of your right analog stick now i'm gonna go ahead and click add a key right next to the reset on the right side on the add a key, I'm going to press my Windows button on my controller, my, my select button. I'm going to drag my select button and put it right over this option right here. Sorry, looks like my three minutes is up. I'm going to press the Mantis icon to minimize this while I go ahead and uh, start another practice match to finish setting up the buttons. By programming the select button, 
it gives you the ability to exit the game whenever you need to. Now I'm going to go ahead and select the add a key and I'm going to press the menu button or the start button. I'm going to drag the start button and put it right over this icon right here. This icon is what turns on the gyroscope on your phone when you rotate it left and right. But it is a very important feature that allows your plane to yaw left and right if you're using an Xbox control. So don't forget to make sure you call around that thing. Next, I'm going to need a way to exit the game and enter the game whenever I need to. So I'm going to go ahead and press my select button. It should register on the app. Oh, never mind, it's not registering. I'm going to minimize this so I could go into the select screen. Let's wait for it. All right. Now it says uh, you want to quit. Are you sure? Go ahead and open up Mantis. I always use the up arrow for yes. So we're going to click the plus sign. So like add a key. Press the up arrow on your D-pad. And then move the up arrow right over yes. Add a key. Press the down arrow. Move that over the no. All right, and now we'll go ahead and minimize Mantis Pearl right quick so we can cancel this. Now we're going to program your action buttons. You see your shield, health, and explosives. I specifically set up my plane to put everything on that exact order. I'm going to use my X button. I'm going to click add a key. I'm going to put my X button right over the shield. Sorry. There you go. And I'm going to add a key again. I'm going to put my Y button right over the health. There's a reason why I use this configuration. You can configure it any way you want. But this is the best one to use so far. And I'm going to add a key. And I'm going to use the B button for my attack boosters now whenever I'm in a game and I'm playing in claw formation I could use use my trigger finger to activate any one of those or slide my hand across the top of my Xbox controller to turn all of those on simultaneously now the machine gun I will go ahead and use the right bumper I enjoy using the right bumper for my machine gun because it is non-evasive in nature and it's what I'm used to. So I'm going to add a key, right bumper, and I'm going to move the right bumper right over the actual trigger mechanism. It's going to overlap your gear, but that's perfectly fine. Speaking of gear, um, where it says camera mode on this gear, we need to go ahead and turn this off. Because if we leave this on, it will register a repeated action, which is going to make it very difficult for you to operate. Make sure you do the same thing for this one. Camera mode off. Very good. All right. Now I'm going to minimize this again so I can grab a third match. Started. Let me open up my menu again. Now, the flare button. I always program my flare button into into my left thumbstick because flares are extremely rare, and I go through them very quickly. So I use correction. I use, I program it onto my left. Thumbstick. If I ever need to use my flare really quickly, I could easily press my left arrow in quick succession. And that allows me to efficiently utilize my flare. All right, let me go ahead and. All right, now to change weapons. I, I always put my change button into my A button. So, 
I'm gonna add the A button in order to change my missile. The reason I put it on the A button is because I wanna remove my, my hand from my right stick in order to change my missiles because my missiles are rare and I don't wanna go through. And now my my missile launch button. That one I'm gonna put it on my on my left bumper. A quick caveat for the A button to change your missiles and you need to drop it slightly down that way it's about halfway covering that button. The reason for that is because you also need your A button to be slightly low enough in order to start your new matches. Now that the buttons are properly configured, I'm going to go ahead and uh, minimize that, open up the controller, verify the Xbox is selected. Very good. Of course, I do not use those settings at the moment. Phase one is activated. When you first open up the app, it says phase one was being initiated. This is your phase one configuration settings. So you can have multiple different button layout for multiple games and then um, rename it as different phases or whatever you need. I'm gonna go ahead and minimize that. Now I'm gonna test the control. Now I'm using my Xbox controls to move left, right, up, down. You remember that that gyroscope button on, on the start menu that I told you about? If you press it, you see on the upper right, it says advanced control. When advanced control is on, it allows you to yaw left and right and slightly adjust while shooting. That makes your shooting very accurate on fast targets. And then you can press it again, and then you roll and move away. Now, my right thumbstick, the reason I said to keep it on the center is because whenever you, you, you pop it out, it should center just about on 50. Or you could pull back for, for an easy break. Right now, I could shoot as well as use missiles at the same time by using, or I could pop forward in order to use my base. All right. That's pretty much it for configuring the game and uh, to demonstrate why it is important to set your menu right over the gyroscope button in order to activate the advanced controls. The advanced control will give you the ability to evade some extremely impossible maneuvers against people with extremely expensive aircrafts. So that is it for my tutorial. And I hope it was helpful for connecting your Xbox to your game. Correction, I hope it was helpful when it comes to connecting your Xbox controller to your, to your phone and then configure it to operate seamlessly. Now let me go ahead and run a match. I'm gonna run a practice match with the controls and you're gonna see how much better it is to fly and make very impossible maneuvers. Even though I do not have the top aircraft, my aircraft can now operate at extremely high precision and right in the So I could compete with some of the top dogs without even trying. So yeah, I could pop for my boosters. I'm moving forward, use my machine gun as well as my missile. And I can pull back and make a very complex maneuver. And I could also adjust my, my, my throttle level to very specific areas with my thumbstick in order to get the most accurate turns possible. Since I use a one-to-one -one ratio, it is very easy for me to, to aim at very specific areas, such as the wings, and I can pull my throttle back. When connected to a fight simulator, I feel like my, I'm moving my hands around way too much, but using an Xbox controller, especially an Elite controller, with a nano response time, it makes gameplays super, super responsive and fast. Look at that. Before on my phone, it used to be very difficult to, to do the barrel roll, to do these type of maneuvers. 
but look at how I could throttle, throttle forward and pull my handbrake and make very tight turns. And then boost back up, quick 180. Once I unlock the better aircrafts, I will be almost unstoppable. Look, look at this response time, even for a one for one. Look at how my joystick is moving. I can stay on the target very easily. Well, that's it for the tutorial. Hope you guys enjoyed it.